In this video, we're going to talk about four different ways that you can hand over from a firewall to a local area network and some of the considerations, both from a logical and a physical perspective. We hope you enjoy the video. Today, we're going to talk about firewall handoffs. And firewall handoffs are basically different techniques that we can use to hand off from a firewall to the local area network. There's four main different techniques that I've identified in this particular slide and we'll talk through each of those briefly where each of them are covered in much more detail in the MNB Network's WAN design course. Let's start on the gateways on the firewall technique. So that's what we have here is um, an internet or a wide area network and then a customer edge router. The customer edge router then has a layer 3 interface which routes to an outside layer 3 interface on the firewall. So this can either be static or dynamic routing. When we start looking and focusing southbound on the firewall, this is what we're actually concentrated on, the handover to the local area network. And this is where we have multiple different ways that we can achieve the same thing. So in this particular instance, we have represented a red, amber, green and that, that's really three different network segments that we're handing off from the firewall. So that could be different zones from the firewall. It could be physical interfaces. It could be physical with logical in, or logical VLANs handed off on each of the physicals. Uh, and there's many different ways that we can configure that. But basically what we want to concentrate on, what is the impact on the firewall when we actually hand over like this? If I take the... the um, purple traffic flow and I come in let's say the the green VLAN something on the green VLAN wanted to talk to or subnet wanted to talk to something on the on the red so you would come in up here hit your default gateway back down there and then then you would route via the firewall from the green to the red network segment or subnet or VLAN depending on what was actually on the local area network. So what's the impact of this? The impact of it is that, it, depending on how complex your ACLs are and what other services you've got on your firewall and how much traffic is flowing through that firewall, whether the links are one gig, 10 gig, 100 meg, yep, still got 100 meg circuits plumbing into firewalls these days, but depending on all these variables are gonna have a different effect on whether this is the right design for you or not. If we move on to the next fire, uh, the next firewall to LAN handover technique, which is layer two transparent, we have a similar thing at the top where we've got an internet or a WAN connection, and then we have a router. So this is, it might be a CE router or it might be a downstream router from the CE. So you might have the CE further up or north of this router. But for argument's sake, so this could potentially be your core switch or a large core router. So what we have here instead of having any layer 3 on the firewall is we have a red, a red, green, which I'm highlighting in red, and then also an orange traffic flow, which all go through at layer 2 on the router. So you might have like um, the default gateway effectively resides on your layer 3 upstream device. However, you can apply policy on your firewall to say that red can talk to green, but red cannot talk to orange segment of the network. So that's handover using layer 2 transparent. Basically your, your default interfaces or default gateways, I should say, are on an upstream device and the networks are trunked through the firewall, or plumbed through the firewall, I should say. Now let's go on to the next technique here, which is gateways are on the firewall, and specifically what we're calling out is the fact that this interface, so this is very similar to gateways on the firewall to the left-hand side. These are effectively the same design model, but they differ slightly, so we still have a static route or dynamic routing running between the upstream router and the firewall, depending on your environment. But the difference here is that we are specifically calling out 
that this is one physical interface and this is an 802.1Q trunk through to the LAN switch which then has the three separate subnets. So it's a similar concept, the difference being that the red, amber and green are always going to be virtual interfaces, so the equivalent to switched virtual interfaces with a VLAN plumbed into them in the firewall and a, effectively a tagged physical port which is handing over to the LAN. Um, from a inter-VLAN or inter-segment perspective, we configure the policy in the same way as we did when we gave the traffic flow example on the left-hand side diagram. Uh, so the impact might actually be greater. So, for example, if you have a one gig link, single physical link that's handing over to the LAN, then you have multiple different segments down here, which are all plumbed into that link, then you might only have one gig throughput. Whereas in this design, you might have a 10 gig port for the red with multiple segments, a 10 gig port for the orange and a 10 gig port for the green. So different designs fit different use cases. The final design that I'm going to talk about on this particular slide is the routed slash gateways on the LAN with VRFs or without VRFs. So let's talk about this very quickly. So we have the same technique here where we have a routed link between the CE or upstream router from the firewall, which is this device here. You see we have the blue interfaces to sim um, signify that these are this is a rooted environment. We then also, if you notice, have a rooted environment from the firewall down to the switch. And the default gateways are then um, presented to the, the LAN switch. So the default gateways in this instance, it might be a single VRF in the global routing table. So the red, the amber and the green could just be VLAN 10, 20, 30 in the global routing table. Or they could be VLAN 10, 20, 30 in VRF A, B and C respectively. If that's the case, then this, what would happen in this environment is we would effectively have used the firewall to route between the red the amber and the green and we would have to do some specific routing configuration on the LAN switch and the firewall in order to accommodate for that. As mentioned we cover this in a lot more detail and in significant detail I should say in the WAN design course and we work through real life examples also. This particular diagram shows an illustration on how physically things could hand over and if you were to split your firewall physical interfaces into segments. So you see here that different physical ports might have different usage, I should say, uh, I guess, on the, on the network. So if you see we have the WAN zone, which actually might have multiple VRFs handed off the top device is the, the LAN core switch and the bottom device is the enterprise firewall. So you see on the firewall we have effectively five interfaces in use on this particular use case um, where the, the purple handoff, physical handoff is for WAN, the blue physical handoff is for servers, the green physical handoff is for DMZs. So this might be a small network where you have one pair of firewalls rather than a back front end and a back end. We then have the yellow handoff on the fourth port which is for the campus LAN so that might be where your users are and then we have an internet so that might be the outside interface if you only have a single tier of firewalls and many small to medium enterprises do have that. And how those zones align into the, the local area network you see we have different VRFs up the top for purple, yellow, green, blue and red where we have potentially another perimeter firewall upstream connected to the core switch. Here we have a representation on how that might look in a in an end-to-end -end network. So 
if you start at the top of the diagram, you know, we have things coming from the internet and from the MPLS network. And those, you see the, the MPLS, the multiple, um, multiple VRFs, which are in the middle of the diagram on the purple line, those are plumbed directly into the core switch, whereas the internet-based services come via a second layer of firewalls. And then when we get into the core switch, you see the internet, internet transport or transit link going from the middle of the diagram, internet security zone, which is in the red, goes into effectively the outside interface of the back-end firewalls. We also then have things like reverse proxies, DMZs, back-end server VLANs, so there's multiple layers of security here. And if we just quickly look at the, the bottom of the diagram, we have um, data center aggregation switches, top of rack switches, and then um, you know different segments of the network which we um, different segments of the network which we may have um, segmented.